Gaganendranath Tagore is considered to be the first pioneering modernist to make use of the visual language and syntax of Cubism for his artistic expression. He was an older brother of Abhinindranath Tagore, an individualist, an intellectual, and an artist who impressed others by his personal charm. William Rothenstein, the English painter who met him in England in 1910, was very much impressed by his white bread, wide breadth of knowledge on culture and art. He was largely a self-taught artist and he learned wash technique from visiting Japanese artists who had come to Joshanko and some of his early works were monochromes of rain-drenched crows that were a common sight in Calcutta. And these monochrome works were to appear later on in his works with a very mysterious mood. Until 1920s, Gaganendranath Tagore was best known for his brilliant, incisive uh, lithographs that satirized the cult uh, social mores of urban Bengal. Then in 1922, he seized upon what Pathamita calls the modernist movement in realizing his artistic expression through cubism. Evaluating his works on Cubism, Stella Cramrish wrote in a rather provocative manner where she said that while Cubism was a European movement, its formalist simplicity was neither unique nor significantly different from the non-illusionist pictorial traditions making a special reference to Indian miniatures. The cubes that Gaganendranath Tagore used to build up his systematic structure was an externalization of his inner experiences which transformed the static geometry of analytical cubism into an expressive device. At this time in 1922, he had created some paintings like the cubist scene or the cubist city in which he brought together the visual conventions of both oriental art and the cubist geometry, which also tended to bring in a contradiction between the flowing line of Indian art and the geometric rationality of cubism. From 1922 to 1928, Gaganendra Tagore held a series of exhibitions for which there were critical comments. Englishman, the newspaper which had been following his career very closely, remarked that this was an, a, a new phase of oriental art. And by 1925, Englishman had also accepted that Gaganendranath Tagore's power of cubism was the result of his personalized individual style. The statesman also made a comment and said, that the rigid telling cubist lines juxtaposed along with the mysterious light evoked or rather had the resonance of Rembrandt's work in his paintings. In 1928, he held a retrospective exhibition at the Indian Society of Oriental Art and that marked his last exhibition in which Englishman once again considered him to be declared rather him to be the mo modern master of art in Bengal. Gaganendranath Tagore in, uh, in 1930 suffered a cerebral attack and he was paralyzed and left speechless. And he survived another eight years in bed and he died in 1938. Uh, Gaganendranath Tagore until 1915 uh, he had been involved with the Orientalist art of his older brother, but now he decided to withdraw from its association. And he began to move into a poetic fairyland tales that was inspired by Bengal's theatre as well as literature. Literature had always nourished his imagination, but not in a painterly historicism. Then it was at this juncture that he came across Cubism, which was to create a new visual language for his artistic expression. And as he stated to one of the journalists, he says that 
this technique you know will result in dynamic forms which he had never ever created before so the multiple points of view and the jagged edges of cubism was to offer gaganendranath tagore an opportunity to create many faceted shapes that evoked you know a remote mysterious feelings or an imagery as he painted in the city of dwarka or the swarnapuri mountain ranges ranges also gave him an opportunity to create compositions in which he made use of diamond shaped facets together with symphonic colors to create a fragmented luminosity somehow light played a very important role in gaganendranath tagore's paintings during this time and this could be attributed to his interest in theater because he says that around this time an important other preoccupation was what he called the house of mystery which was inspired by the play of his uncle of rabindranath tagore and he had uh, designed stage settings also for it in these works he made use of uh, he kind of imagined in uh, interiors in which there was a dazzling pattern of criss crossing play of light and shades that gave a very mysterious and a very dramatic effect so and he also in these uh, paintings like the house of mystery he also uh, used a lot of stage props like the curtains the screens endless halls corridors pillars half open doors doors etc and in this respect the works that he created using this chiaroscuro or should i say it as tenebrism because there was an extreme contrast of light and dark that's what created a sense of mystery also a, a romanticism and also leading to a kind of a spirituality uh in order to get different kind of light effects which were had become his main concern now we find gaganendranath tagore resorting to mechanical devices and it is said that he used to hold up a crystal to the light and make use of the dramatic colors that would fall on the paper that he would place below then eventually he came across a kaleidoscope which was of great immense aid to him as it allowed the breaking down of the colors into numerous hues and tones as well as the geometric shapes so kaleidoscope offered him a means of creating a new art of color music and englishman once again uh, seems to have made a remark that these are paintings less but they are more of visual music and pulsating light gaganendranath tagore's use of cubism was to prove a great uh, move forward and uh, his discovery of cubism came through rabindranath tagore when he had brought in the exhibition from europe of the bauhaus artists and the artists included paul klee kandinsky lionel feininger gerard mark and many others and uh, it was these works which inspired him and when the bauhaus exhibition happened in 92, 1922 in calcutta his works were displayed along with it and it was mainly the comparison between the works of these of the uh, cubism of gaganendranath tagore and the cubism of many other artists that were represented here which made many of the critics realize especially stella cramrish that what gaganendranath tagore was creating was a lyrical poetic cubism and it did not have the staticness but rather it was very dynamic and uh, as his pictorial language developed gaganendranath tagore found fu uh, futurist language far more suitable than the static geometry of analytical cubism but his visual conventions were still within the boundaries of the oriental art the cubism of gaganendranath tagore 
brought into brought the question of the reception of modernism in India in the 1920s. His Cubist ex excursion also brought to the fore the reading of avant-garde visual language in a culture that still had to confront modernism. So in this way, like Jamani Roy, who is considered to be an avant-garde artist in the way he engaged with the folk art visual language and its tradition in many different ways. So also Gagarindra Tagore is considered to be a pioneering artist of a poetic cubism. And after 1940s, of course, all these various movements from Europe became a common 